Let me show you how to create a single line that automatically connects to all the points on my graph. And this line is responsive, which means that I can pull on these points and the line will automatically follow it. You can do that to all of them like this. There's definitely more. You can select a point and duplicate it a few times to insert more. It will automatically find the place right here. You can make all the adjustments. The line will follow the new points. You can do the same thing at the end here as well. Duplicate it a few times make any kind of adjustments you want. You can also select the controls here, adjust the spacing here, bring things closer, further apart. So you can download this free project file by going to the description of this video and click on the link there or in the comments below, depending on where you're watching this video. So let me show you how to set this up. The first thing I'm gonna do is go into the tutorial composition. And this composition has everything except for the line because that's something we're gonna be creating. So we do have the controls. It's a null that everything else is parented to. So I can select those controls and move it Notice all the points will move with it, which is super handy. Next, we need to create a line. And to do that, we're going to go to the pen tool here, select it, make sure Roto Bezier is not checked and just draw a simple line like this. I'm going to change the color of my layer to something like green. That way it stands out here. And then I'm going to change the name of my line to line. So now notice we have the line and the origin of it is right here. So what I want to do, I want to take this line and parent it to our controls. That way it's in the same space. But not only that, I also want for it to be exactly where the controls is. Now there's a quick shortcut that you can use, hold down shift on your keyboard, and then parent pick whip to controls like this. So not only will it parent it, but it will also move it to the origin of your controls layer, which is super handy. So now I'm gonna take this line and put it at the very end of all of my dots. So that way it's behind all of them. What I wanna do next is go into our line right here and uh, use expressions or code to basically create a different line. And the line that I wanna create is based on these dots right here. So essentially I'm gonna say, hey, gather all these dots and gather the coordinates of them, like the X and the Y, and create a line based on those dots. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna select this line. We're gonna go all the way to the path property. This is where we're gonna be creating the line. Make sure you select it, hit S twice to solo it. And in here, I'm going to alt click on a stopwatch to create an expression for it. So I'm gonna create our line inside of this code right here. And the first thing I wanna do is create a variable. You can think of it like a container that's gonna hold the coordinates of every point we have in here. So let's do that right now. We're gonna create a variable called list of points. Now it can be called anything you want, but that's what I'm gonna call it. And I'm gonna tell it to be an empty array. And you can think of it like an empty shell. So we have a variable that's empty, like an empty box. And then we're gonna push things in it. I wanna create a function that searches every single layer starting at the very top. So it's gonna to go to the first layer and it's gonna search for the name of the layer. And I want for it to search for the first three letters of the layer. So it's gonna go over here and say, does the first three letters have D-O-T in it, dot, right? If it doesn't, it goes to the next one. But if it does, like this one right here, which is a point that we want, then it basically grabs the position of it and puts it into that list. So that's the function we're gonna write. We're gonna do four. And in parentheses, we're gonna define our condition for that loop. And for loop essentially just runs the same code based on the condition, like do it 10 times and it'll do it 10 times and so on. So in here, we're gonna define a variable. We're gonna say let i, and it can be anything. I'm saying i, but it can be b, it can be dog. You can call it anything you want. So I'm gonna say let i be one. And in this case, it's layer index. So layer index, I wanna start with layer one. So that's why I said one. So go to layer one and then two, three, four, and so on. So that's the starting point, okay? Then you wanna define a condition for this loop. As long as the condition is true, it's gonna run the loop, but if the condition is false, it stops it. So the condition is this. Do this loop as long as i is less than or equal to number of layers that we have. So in this case, we have 14 layers. I don't wanna type 14 because if I duplicate, I have to constantly adjust it manually. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna say this comp, and then I'm gonna say num layers. And this basically will give me the amount of layers in this composition, which is exactly what I want. So as long as this condition is true, it's gonna run it. But if I becomes bigger than the number of layers I have, then it's gonna stop the whole thing. Okay, so then I'm gonna say I plus plus, which means I want I to increase incrementally, which is like one, two, three, four, and so on. So that's what that's for. And then if the condition is true, then I want for us to run a code inside of these curly brackets. This is what we call code block. So if the condition is true, then just run this code repeatedly, however many times we defined in here. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna create a variable for the current layer in the loop. And essentially it's gonna be this comp 
and layer, instead of typing the name of the layer, we're gonna say I, because I is the index value, right? So it's gonna be layer one in the first loop and then two, three, and so on. So that's what that's for. And then we're gonna do this. So we're gonna create a conditional statement. We're gonna say if, and then in parentheses, we're gonna define our condition. We're gonna say if the current layer name, and by name, I want the first three letters. So I'm gonna say slice, and then index zero to three, basically grab first three letters. So if the first three letters equal to, and I'm gonna say dot, then here's what I wanna do. I want for us to run the code inside of this code block, inside of these curly brackets. And what I wanna do, I wanted to basically copy this list. So I want to take this list and then push something into it using the push method. So what do I wanna push? Well, I wanna push the position of that dot layer. I'm going to say, take the current layer that you found and we want to grab the position. But not only that, we want to be more specific because position has many properties like the name. We want to grab the value of the position. So we defined this and I know we did a lot of coding here, but essentially we have a list full of coordinates and now I want to do something with it. So what I want to do with this, is I'm going to say this property. So the current property that we're in, this path one right here, we're going to use create path which is this method right here. And we're going to paste our coordinates in here like this. And so when I click away, we do have exactly what we want. However, there is one little problem. We do have connecting points in here. So we don't want that. We want to have the line, but we don't want to connect it back to the first one. So to do this, we're going to basically say comma, and then we're gonna do an empty list for in tangents and then out tangents. And then for the fourth value, we're gonna say false. And the reason why, because the fourth value is basically asking is closed. By default, it says true, and that's why we see the line. But if you say false, it's not gonna be closed. So when you click away, now it's working like a charm. So you can move on every point in here. Everything will work flawlessly. So that's how you do it.